Dr. Jason Saunders here with HBOT USA and another frequently asked question. So again, another email that I get pretty often is, uh, if I buy this soft chamber and put it in my home, uh, am I at risk of it blowing up? It's a great question. Uh, it's a serious question. Uh, it's obviously a very serious concern. And so I definitely want to clarify this because there seems to be enormous confusion uh, around this topic. So. There are a few different setups and a lot of different ways that hyperbaric oxygen can be uh, configured. And each of these makes an enormous difference in terms of uh, the effect that it has, the amount of oxygen we could absorb, and uh, what type of safety uh, precautions we need to take when utilizing such equipment. So uh, let's go to the hospital version first. In a typical hospital uh, mono place chamber, those chambers are basically uh, filled with 100% oxygen and pressurized by that 100% oxygen. So when you're inside that chamber at, you know, two atmospheres, let's just say, whatever the pressure might be, you're literally bathing in 100% oxygen. Now, oxygen, contrary to popular belief, is not flammable, but oxygen is an accelerant. Um, it oxidizes very quickly, and with the right a uh, set of circumstances uh, could light on fire and with the pressure in the enclosed area, there could be a spark, there could be an explosion, and that could be very dangerous. Specifically right now, I'm talking about hospital chambers. Because of that, uh, we wear 100% cotton because you cannot even have, you know, static electric sparks. Uh, it's very regulated in terms of what you can wear on your body. Uh, clothing wise, what you could put in your hair and on your skin in terms of uh, petroleum chemicals. What you're trying to do is you're trying to absolutely minimize anything that could uh, either create a spark or uh, with the right fuel type be considered flammable that the oxygen can then drive that fire. So yes, in a hyperbaric environment, which is pressurized and filled with 100% oxygen, there's extreme measures that need to be taken uh, to make sure that patients and staff uh, are very safe when handling hyperbaric oxygen. Now, let's just contrast that to home units. Now, home units could either be air only or air filled with uh, what's considered oxygen concentrator uh, air supplement. So, and that's usually piped in through a mask and just, you know, uh, you're breathing, let's say 94%, 95% oxygen while under a certain pressure, which is the pressure is created by air. So right now, wherever you're sitting, as long as you're not in a, a hospital chamber in this moment, uh, the air that we're breathing is 21% oxygen. Now, because there's oxygen in the air, let's say we had a match, that match would light and it would burn because there's enough oxygen in the air to fuel that fire. However, without that initial spark, the match wouldn't catch on fire. There's no risk, there's no increased risk of a fire occurring in the room that you're sitting in right now because at 21% oxygen, uh, it's enough oxygen to feed a burning fire, but it is not enough oxygen to really accelerate um, a potential fire. You still need the spark and the fire for that oxygen to fuel it. Inside of a home chamber, Without an oxygen concentrator, the air inside that chamber is 21% oxygen, just like it is outside the chamber. In those setups, you're literally filling the chamber with air, and although there's more air, it's, it's pressurized. So there's more molecules of air inside that chamber than outside that chamber, which is why it allows an increased absorption of oxygen into our body. But it does not change the percentage of oxygen in the air that you're breathing. Therefore, if there's no increased risk of uh, anything being flammable in the air we're breathing right now at 21%, there is no increased risk of that happening inside an air only chamber uh, in your home. And so there would be no more risk inside that than, than here. Now, as you increase the percentage of oxygen, you will increase that risk. However, in a home chamber, let's say with an oxygen concentrator, in a similar environment, assuming, let's say it's 94% oxygen, which, you know, the acceleration of fire increases with the percentage of oxygen. Um, it's not a 
in massive risk, really, until we reach that 100%. Uh, medical grade, 100% uh, oxygen uh, is much more of an accelerant than even, let's say, 94% uh, coming out of that concentrator. So, uh, but also inside the environment of the chamber, if you're wearing a mask, breathing, let's say, 94% oxygen and breathing the majority of that in, and the ambient air that you're pressurizing the chamber with is still 21%, if you were to take an ambient air sample within that chamber, typically we're looking at under 25% oxygen total in the ambient environment. Um, according to all safety standards uh, with hyperbaric oxygen and hyperbaric medicine, uh, keeping the ambient air percentage at 25% or less, preferably closer to 23%, uh, again, there's virtually no increased risk of uh, anything happening in terms of increased flammability, increased uh, potential for explosions of, of any kind. And so, again, we need to dish delineate between hospital and home chambers. These home chambers, even with concentrators, when used properly and put together in the right way, the ambient pressure, or I should say, uh, it's the pressure of oxygen, but it's really the percentage of oxygen being, let's say, somewhere between more than 21, but less than 25%, it's still a very, very safe environment uh, for us to be in. You do not need to change your clothes. You do not need to worry about, you know, uh, static sparks from clothing or anything of the sort. And so uh, are you at risk? Listen, with any medical device in any environment, uh, there are risks and benefits, and we need to be aware of them. Uh, from a general safety standpoint, from a, a fire and explosion, uh, home hyperbaric chambers are extremely safe, especially uh, when purchased through a reputable manufacturer. Um, you know, there should be virtually very little or no concern of those types of issues. Um, there are other things to be aware of, and hopefully if you have a chamber, you're thinking about getting a chamber that... Uh, you work with someone knowledgeable on this topic so you know exactly what you're getting, how to use it, what to expect, um, you know, and, and have a plan should things not be going the way you would want them to go in terms of just the overall function. But in terms of this specific topic, uh, these home chambers are built for home. And so they're meant to be extraordinarily safe when used properly with the correct uh, equipment. So I hope that helps answer the question and I'll see you next time. Don't forget, if you like our content, please subscribe to the HBOT USA YouTube channel and we'll see you next time.